Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Kevin Scott's High Republic comic series returned with one wild ass ride of an issue. This series continues to be stellar and issue 4 was no exception. There's a lot to unpack with this one so let's dive right into it. The issue opens 6 years prior in 238 BBY with Jedi Master Skier and his then apprentice Keeve Trennis on the mid rim planet Karima. Skier is testing Keeve by having her force jump over a canyon of sorts but the Jedi Padawan is apprehensive about her abilities to make the jump. Keeve eventually mustered the courage to to attempt to try, but Skier is there to save her from falling to her death with the Force, which felt very much like the jump scene from The Matrix. We then cut back to present day on Sedri Minor, where Keeve, Avar Chris, Serret, and the young Bartol are wrapped in Drengear vines while Skier is still under control of the Drengear. As Avar pleads with Skier to release them, the Drengear speak through the Jedi Master and tell a brief history of their species. The Drengear explain that they once spread across the galaxy, feasting on flesh and bone wherever it could be found, and that their harvest as it's called, was bountiful, insinuating that the Drengear's presence was far-reaching throughout the galaxy. The Drengear continue and explain that the Sith saw the power that the Drengear had, but that the Sith eventually betrayed the Drengear, as is the Sith's nature. Because of this, the Sith paid the price for their betrayal and the Drengear attacked them. The Sith in turn trapped the first of the Drengear, called the Great Progenitor, in totems and placed them on a space station built by the ancient Amaxines. And then, after the Great Hyperspace Disaster forced the Traveler's of the vessel to seek refuge on the Amaxine station, the Great Progenitor was woken from her slumber, which in turn woke all of the Drengear. I absolutely loved this part for several reasons. For one thing, anytime we get to learn about the Sith, especially ancient Sith, I think it's the coolest. Secondly, the mention of the Amaxine station and the totems being found there is a reference to the High Republic novel Into the Dark by Claudia Gray, which saw a contingent of Jedi taking refuge on the Amaxine station, finding the dark side totem totems that the Drengear were trapped in and then setting that dark side presence free, which was in fact the Great Progenitor with a Force Ritual. That was one of my favorite parts of Into the Dark and I recently released a video about that Force Ritual that freed the Great Progenitor, so make sure to check that video out if you haven't. Lastly, I think it's really cool that we're learning that the first of the Drengear is known as the Great Progenitor. Since the Drengear are going to play such a large role in the High Republic, I'm definitely looking forward to learning more about them, so this part of the issue was really fun. From there, there, we see that the dead hut that's being tested on back at Starlight Beacon was not killed by the Nile in issue 2, but that it succumbed to an infection, and we see Jedi Knight Vernestra Rowe and her Padawan, Imri Kantaros, are assisting archivist Orbelin with the autopsy. Vernestra Rowe and Imri Kantaros also appeared in Justina Ireland's High Republic novel A Test of Courage, so I appreciate their inclusion here as well. As Orbelin, Vernestra, and Imri are discussing the autopsy, a damn Drengear rips through the dead hut's body like some something straight out of Ridley Scott's Alien. As this is happening, the trapped Jedi and Sedri Minor continue to plead with Skier to fight the hold the Drengear has on him and to free them, and Skier reveals that he let the Drengear infect him so that he'd be able to understand their true nature and their weaknesses. This then prompts Skier to use the Force and attack the Drengear, allowing Avar, Keeve, Serret, and Bartol to be released from the Drengear vines. Before the Jedi press their attack against the Drengear, Keeve tells Skier they have to remove the vines within him since those vines connect him with the Drengear, but Skier tells Keeve the vines are a part of him and he a part of them. Skier then holds back the Drengear as Keeve attacks them and slices them up. I love that as Keeve is attacking the Drengear, she's thinking about the fact that taking life is always the last resort of the Jedi, except when the dark side must be pushed back. This was something echoed in Light of the Jedi and I think it really helps showcase the differences between the Jedi of the High Republic and the prequel era Jedi. Anyway, as Keeve and Skier are fighting off the Drengear, Avar Chris goes to arrest the leader of the Sedri Minor colony, Cal Sulman, and Keeve and Skier soon arrive to thwart Sulman's escape. Jedi Master Astala Maru then sends Avar Chris a calm and tells her that Starlight Beacon is under attack from the Drengear, right as an armored hut emerges from a ship flanked by Gamorrean guards riding rancors and declares that Sedri Minor is now the property of the Hut Cartel, which holy shit. As I mentioned at the start of this video, the High Republic number 4 was a wild and and fantastic ride. I loved learning about the Great Progenitor and the Drengear's connection to the Sith, and when I read this issue for the first time and saw the Hut Cartel had arrived at the end, I straight up said, SHIT, as I concluded the issue. Aside from that, I'm still very curious to know what's going on with Skier. As Skier fought off the control the Drengear had on him and returned to his senses, he told Keeve that there is still much he has to tell her, and he mentioned the Battle of Kerr before he was cut off.
off by Avar Chris. At the end of issue 1, which lines up with the ending of Light of the Jedi, we saw Skier scream out in horror. I do believe that Skier, just like Elzar Mann, had a vision in the Force that scared the hell out of him. I imagine this is what he's referring to with Keeve, which would explain what's been up with him. High Republic number 5 drops on May 12th, and the preview for the issue mentions that Keeve will learn the secret that Skier has been holding in, so I'm really excited for that issue to be released. Issue 4 had a lot to unpack, but was such a fun issue, continuing my joy and excitement for this series. But what do you guys think about Kevin Scott's High Republic? And what's your thoughts on the Sith and and gear working together. Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.